Wonderful Life. And our Way to Wonderful Life message today <clears throat> is a tribute to the great Dr. Joseph Murphy. <clears throat> Dr. Joseph Murphy, DRS, DD, PhD, LLD. Can you imagine all those on all those uh, all those designations? That means he's a very educated, a very very intelligent man. And then some of these are honorary doctorates, I think. He wrote and taught and counseled and lectured to thousands of people all over the world for nearly 50 years. Born in 1898, he was educated in Ireland and England, and his years of research studying the world's major religions convinced him that some great power lay behind them all, and he painstakingly followed this lead to make one of the greatest discoveries of all time, and that is, the power is within you. That power is within you. Just as Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you, not low here or low there. The author of more than 30 books, including the spiritual classic, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. Dr. Murphy remains a beacon of enlightenment and inspiration for leads into loyal followers all over the globe. The spiritual seekers throughout the world are familiar with his teachings, and the following is a, is a transcription of a tape recording from Dr. Murphy, and this is his exact words verbatim. I haven't added anything to it or modified it in any way, and I'm going to go through this today just so that each and every one of us can realize the consciousness of this man who dedicated so much of his life to <clears throat> giving us this information. One of the things that's so amazing about Dr. Murphy is Dr. Murphy was my teacher, Dr. O.C. Smith, first ministerial teacher, first spiritual teacher. And Dr. Murphy was a, was a, a great influence on Dr. O.C. Smith. And, of course, like uh, as you, many of you know, Dr. O.C. Smith, the O.C. Smith of God didn't make little green apples and it don't rain in Indianapolis. He's also a, a noted musician, a famous musician and, uh, uh, or a singer and a musical artist. <clears throat> he was my teacher. So all the experiences, Dr. Murphy tells us, all the experiences, conditions, and events of our life are the result of the totality of our beliefs. Moreover, all of us have many beliefs and ideas which we have long since forgotten, perhaps going back to childhood, hidden in the deeper recesses of our subconscious mind. All our beliefs and tendencies with which we were born are still with us, and they have power to manifest in and influence our lives. For example, if you believe that sitting near a fan will give you a stiff neck, your subconscious mind will see to it that you get a stiff neck. Not because of the fan, which represents innocuous mo molecules of energy oscillating at a higher frequency, but because of your erroneous beliefs. I have seen people in India operate working under a fan all day, it has no effect whatever upon them. The fan is harmless. Surely you don't say the fan gives you a stiff neck. It, it, it is mole molecules moving in space. If you're afraid that you'll catch a cold because someone sneezes, your fear is a movement. Your fear is a movement of your own mind, which creates what you expect, creates what you fear, and creates what you believe. Others in your office don't get a cold when the virus comes around. There are many men and women in your office and your factory. They never get it. They don't believe in it. They believe in hell. If you happen to be in a warm room and you go out in the cold atmosphere, nature may cause you to sneeze. That's nature's way of bringing about a balance, an equilibrium in your body. A sneeze is a blessing. It's a benediction. Many, however, fear that they are now catching a cold, not knowing that it is the creative power of their own thought that's causing the cold. This young man wondered what he had done to deserve such struggle. Confessed to me that he had bought an astrology magazine that morning, and it said that there was a great danger of an automobile accident and to be very careful. He said that he was charged with fear and shook all over when he read it. <clears throat> he didn't want to drive that day, but he had, had, but he had to go for an audition, which was very important, and the only way was by car. He had three accidents that same day, injuring one man seriously. He was suffering from shock himself and also received some contusions and lacerations. 
His car was badly damaged. Job said, what I greatly feared has come upon me. It had nothing to do with the stars, the Mercury and Venus, or the Harmony and Saturn. They're all molecules moving in space. <clears throat> like the Earth, there is nothing evil in this universe. God pronounced everything good and very good. Why should we have the effrontery, the audacity, the impertinence to pronounce certain things evil when God pronounced everything good and very good? Nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. His great fear brought on those accidents, thoughts which are emotionalized, are dramatized into experience by the subconscious mind. His subconscious mind took his great fear as a request and manifested it on the screen of space. What we sow, we shall surely reap. There is only one power. That's the spirit within you. You call it consciousness, which is the way you think, the way you feel, and the way that you believe. What you give mental consent to. There is no other power, cause, or substance in the universe. Let's go back and let's read this one more time. There is only one power. What we sow, we shall surely reap. That's the spirit within us. We call it consciousness, which is the way we think, the way we feel, and the way we believe. What we give mental consent to. There is no other power, cause, or substance in the universe. But Dr. Murphy says, I, I gave this man a prayer to use regularly and elaborated on the point. That if he filled his mind with these great truths, his subconscious mind would accept them accordingly and he would be under a subconscious compulsion to drive harmoniously and peacefully that nothing would ever happen to him again. <clears throat> this is the prayer I gave him, suggesting that he use it regularly and systematically until it became a part of him. Just like an apple becomes your bloodstream, the same way you learn to walk, to swim, to dance, or play the piano, to type, you repeat a thought again and again, and after a while, it was second nature, an automatic response of your deeper mind to your conscious thinking and acting. That's prayer. When you type, you're praying. When you drive a car, you're praying. You're conforming to principle. The wheels have to be round. The gas won't drive your car. It has to change its consistency and become a vapor. Likewise, in order for your world to change, you have to change your mind. You can't go on thinking the same old way. And in order to think in a new way, you have to get some new ideas. You have to find out about the laws of mind, the spiritual laws that govern the universe in which we live. You have to get a read for your new thinking. And therefore, you begin to think about whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, noble, and godlike. You realize that your thoughts are created. Whatever you impress in the subconscious, good or bad, is expressed. Therefore, you begin to have a healthy, reverent, wholesome respect for your thoughts. Now, there's a, there's a reason for your thinking then. So this man began to affirm, this is God's car, his own car, it's God's idea, of course it is. Where did it come from? It moves from point to point freely, joyously, and God's wisdom guides this car. In all its ways, God's order, symmetry, and beauty govern the mechanism of this car at all times. God's holy presence blesses this car and all its occupants. The driver of this car is an ambassador of God. He's full of love and goodwill to all. God's peace, truth, and understanding always governs the driver. God directs all decisions, making straight, beautiful, and perfect the way. The spirit of the Lord God is upon the driver making all roads a highway for his God. Now, that's a wonderful prayer. So we start thinking about what are the words that we need to affirm for the things that we seek to enjoy, the things that we seek to do, and what are the fears and the doubts and the worries that move to our mind? What are the fears and doubts and worries that move to our mind? Because Dr. Murphy tells us that we must, we must conform to, to the good and the very good that God tells us is available to all of us. We must conform to that good. And if we keep thinking that bad things are going to happen, then bad things are going to, going to happen. God pronounced everything good and very good. We read that in the, the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. <clears throat> Nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. That's a quote from Shakespeare. 
so we know that we should have we we should we should align ourselves with the thoughts of God that all is good and very good and as we pronounce everything good and very good then we shall find ourselves realizing a greater good my health is good and very good and I'm thanking God that I'm healthy my my prosperity is increasing my financial prosperity is increasing my prosperous of love and joy and happiness is increasing. All good things are increasing in my life, and I'm thanking God every day that this is so. That's putting our mind into a condition of expecting the good and realizing the good and letting the good have a free flow in our mind, our heart, and our soul, and therefore it will outpicture into our life experiences in the right and perfect time in the right and perfect way. There is only one power. There is only one power. So what we sow, we shall surely reap, because that power is within us. It's the spirit within us. Just as Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you, not low here or low there. So if you want to realize that kingdom of good, you have to start building the mental, the mental household of, of, of all things good in your mind and not let anything of a negative nature, not anything, let anything that denies that all that God created was good and very good move through your mind. Just know that everything is working itself to the good, no matter how uh, how awful it may appear to be in the moment, that everything works to the good. There's only one power, that's the spirit within you. We call it consciousness, which is the way we think, the way we feel, the way we believe, what we give mental consent to. Mental consent to. There is no other power, cause, or substance in the universe. And we read that in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, in an enlightened state of mind, revealed that I, I am the Lord. Besides me, there is none other. Besides me, there is no thing. There is no power but me. There is only nothingness. So we know that God was revealing to him that there's only one power. That power is God. There's only one life. That life is God. There's only one thing in the universe for us to recognize and identify with that has any kind of real substance to it, and that is the good. That is the good. Everything unlike the good fades away into the nothingness at some point in time. Let's look at these words of wisdom from the great Eric Butterworth from his book, The Universe is Calling. Eric Butterworth writes, Let me repeat, you do not pray to God, but from a consciousness of God. And what did Dr. Murphy tell us was consciousness? He said, it's the way we think. It's the way we think. It's the way we think. It's the way we give mental consent to the ideas and thoughts in our mind that create our our prayer, our consciousness. Think about this, Dr. Eric Butterworth says. Get Get it into your awareness. You do not pray to God, but from a consciousness of God. Think about this. That's why we must recognize God, infinite power, infinite spirit infinite intelligence and it's available to us to so get into your get it into your awareness so whenever you have something to pray about before you start looking up and reaching out pause for a moment and remember to first get the awareness of oneness that we are in god that's what the apostle paul tells us in the scriptures in him we live and move and have our being so we know this him is spirit it's life it's true so get the awareness of oneness as a mighty potential of life, substance, and intelligence within you, then set about spiritedly to pray for that awareness. You may have thought that you were only praying when you said, now I am going to start praying. No matter what you call it, your thoughts concerning any subject is a prayer treatment. Your thoughts concerning any subject is a prayer treatment. And our thoughts generate our faith. So whatever we're... Wherever our thoughts are going, whatever direction our thought is is going, whatever way in which we're thinking, if we're thinking towards the good or we're thinking towards the negative or we're thinking towards that which is wonderful and beautiful or we're thinking towards that which is of God or if we're thinking of that which is of the world, that's where we're going to go in faith. In faith we will demonstrate, we will actualize in our experiences those thoughts and beliefs that we give consent to in our mind as the truth. That's the truth for me, the truth for you, the truth for everybody. As we sow, so shall we reap. And where do we sow? We sow in our mind. We sow into this kingdom of God within us. 
that Jesus is telling us about. Now, the great Ernest Holmes in his book, The Thing Called Life, writes, the law of life is a law of goodness, of goodness. And if you use it in any harmful way, your use of it will hurt you. The law of life is a law of goodness, and if you use it in any harmful way, your use of it will hurt you. This is the only limitation the law seems to have, and it is not a limitation at all. Rather, it is a complete protection. But if there is no malice in your heart toward anyone, if you are permitting love to emanate from you and goodwill toward all, if you sincerely desire the good for all, Please remember you have every right to include yourself. Every right to include yourself. You are the one person living who is intimately acquainted with yourself. You are the one to whom yourself is most important. This is not self-conceit. It is logical self-justification. You exist that this power may have another, a unique outlet for its expression. The more life you express, the more of it flows through you. Therefore, every legitimate desire you have is the pushing of this power through you into its own self-expression. And in this way, you are in partnership with the infinite. And in this way, you are part in partnership with the infinite. So let's go back to those words. You exist that this power, this power, intelligent spirit that we call God, may have another, a unique outlet for its expression. It's infinite. It's infinite expression. The more life you express, the more of it flows through you. Therefore, every legitimate desire you have is the pushing of this power through you into its own self-expression, into its own self-expression. In this way, you are in partnership with the infinite. In this way, you are in partnership with the infinite. So we just think about these words and think about what's going on in my mind right now. What am I thinking about myself? What am I thinking about where I am today? Where, what's going on with me? Am I looking for a job? Am I looking for more money? Am I looking to be healthier? Am I looking to be, be uh, satisfied with my life? Am I, what, what's going on in my mind? Am I feeling a joy and a peace and a love for everything? Am I feeling like, I, like I'm interested in life and everything is wonderful? Or am I moving to a, a place of, of depression in my mind or, 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 or the blues, you know, let's don't sing the blues. Let's don't sing the blues. We don't want the blues to ho show up in our experience. Let's open our mind to the, to the beauty and the glory and the joy of God being present in our life every day and take that into our mind that God is present in my life every day. That means good is present, so I must open my mind to be receive it, open my mind to be receptive to it, open my mind so that the awareness of it can enter into my mind as the truth for me and for everyone. So Dr. Murphy tells us all the experiences, conditions, and events of our life are the result of the totality of our beliefs. Moreover, all of us have many beliefs and ideas which we have long since forgotten. In our conscious mind, we've long since forgotten them perhaps going back to childhood. Hidden in the deeper recesses of our subconscious mind are all these thoughts and beliefs that we have, we have merely forgotten about. We don't even think about them, but all of a sudden something shows up in our life that we have an illness or we have a problem with money or we have a problem with relationships or we have a problem with unemployment, and all of a sudden this something that we believe in, this something that caused us to feel that there's a... There's a reason for us to struggle. There's a reason for us to, to live in lack and limitation that something shows up. And so we must move through our mind with a greater, a greater energy, the thoughts of, of good and very good. All that God created was good and very good, including you and me. And so we want to pronounce this to ourselves, and we want to announce this to ourselves every day in a greater way so that we can feel that good move through our mind and just take it into our mind, just like that quote from Shakespeare that Dr. Murphy uses so often, nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And Jesus tells us it rains on the good and the bad alike, on the just and the unjust. In other words, get over your thoughts about the good and the bad because there's there's no god 
up in the sky with a mag- with a telescope pointed at any one of us, lo- looking for our mistakes and looking for our sins and looking for our our falling our, our shortfalls in life, our falling short of things. God is within, within the mind, the heart, and the soul of every one of us, that living spirit of God that wants to move through us as power, wants to move through us as intelligence, wants to move through us as a spirit that has faith and belief and the confidence to know that all that God created was good and very good and there's good for me and I can have it. Let's go back to those words of Eric Butterworth before we end our program this morning. This is from his book, The Universe is Calling. Eric Butterworth was also a great teacher. He was in the unity movement. Let me repeat, he writes, you do not pray to God, but from a consciousness of God. Think about this. Get it into your awareness. So whenever you have something to pray about, before you start looking up and reaching out, pause for a moment and remember, first, get the awareness of oneness. Know that you are in God and you are of God as a mighty potential of life, substance, and intelligence within you, then set about spiritedly, spiritedly, with energy, to pray from that awareness, with confidence, pray from that awareness. You may have thought that you were only praying when you said, now I am going to start praying, but no matter what you call it, your thoughts concerning any subject is a prayer treatment. Your thoughts concerning any subject is a prayer treatment. Isn't that amazing? Let's look at these words of Dr. Ernest Holmes from this thing called life. The law of life is a law of goodness. It's a law of goodness. And if we have no malice in our heart towards anyone, if we are permitting love to emanate from us and goodwill towards all, if we sincerely desire the good for all, and this is to remember, and please remember, he says, to include this good for all, to include yourself, we will, we shall have the experience of it. And that's the truth for me and the truth for you and the truth for everyone. And so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me today. It's been my great pleasure to have you. And I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on WKDI.